It is the pastor's heart and Dominic Steele. And today, weakness is good for you with Matt Fuller. Matt is the senior minister of Christchurch Mayfair in London. He's been there for 20 years. They planted five churches. He's an author with the Gospel Coalition. He's a regular conference speaker. He's in Australia for Easter, giving the main Bible talks at the Katoomba Christian Convention in the Blue Mountains to the west of Sydney. And I first asked Matt to come and do this interview. I don't know whether it was one year ago or two years ago when he was first scheduled to come over. Yeah. and give these Bible talks before the COVID lockdowns, uh, before Australia closed to the world. And Matt, um, thanks for coming in and being prepared to be vulnerable today. Uh, we're on the pastor's heart. We're talking to senior pastors. And uh, I don't know what we were thinking of getting you in to talk about two years ago, but you said you'd be prepared to talk about weakness and a meltdown journey that you've been on. Yes, I, th I, I think weakness is good for you. I think... I don't think that's news to anyone who's been who's a Christian. We know that's true. You weakness is the way you become a Christian. You say, I, I need Jesus. I can't achieve heaven. And weakness is the way on. And we, and we know that. Um, but we need to relearn it a lot, mm -hmm. I think. And uh, yeah, certainly in the last year, I've, I've relearned that significantly, I think. And um, I think it's been really good for us as a church overall. Good for you as a church. And for you? Yeah, 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 mm, definitely. What happened? Um, well, yes, in, in what order? The, I think three, really, I hit the, completely hit the wall last Easter. There were three main things probably that fed into that. Uh, one would have been a, a pattern of ministry that was fine 20 years ago, but as you get a little older, you have to run a little smarter and, so and I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I wasn't running smarter, I was still running stupidly. Um, you know, the, the strength is the glory of the young man and, and the wisdom of the older man. And um, I was still trying to do ministry out of the young man's strength rather than the older man's wisdom, perhaps. So a, a pattern that probably wasn't, I'd never really got out of startup mode. From mm -hmm. We were a church plant 20 years ago. And I'd never really got out of that mode of thinking, I don't think, despite the fact that uh, we'd seen in God's kindness growth. So that was probably a sort of longer term, which was okay on mm -hmm. its own, not ideal. Um, my mother had been terminally ill with cancer for, mm -hmm. for quite a period. Uh, my dad's dead, had been dead a long time earlier. Uh, and I was the primary aid or take, you know, take her to hospital. And, mm. and particularly the last six months of life before she died in October 2020 was, was pretty relentless mm. and intense. Um, and then COVID, um, which I didn't find easy. Mm -hmm. I don't like working on my own. I need to be with people. I'm an extrovert who goes a little stir crazy without people around me. And I think our staff team, you know, quite a big team, um, managing that was just so much harder when you can't just mm. whisper something in someone's ear for two minutes, but have to pick up the phone. And so I think a, a combination of those things, and then there were one or two particular pastoral issues just before Easter. Um, so I, I, at one point in March, I said to our uh, senior elders, I, I'm in trouble. I think I'm not great. I just need to let you know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and I think you said to me, when you first said that to them, they didn't take you too seriously. Yes, yeah, so I don't, I, I take responsibility for that, I'm sure. Um, but, I think they just they, they said, just are used to you coping. Yeah. You know, I've been there twenty years, and I would be viewed as competent. And yeah. and I think they just thought, oh yes, well, none of us are doing particularly well at the moment no, in COVID yeah. times. You know, he'll be fine. Up. Yeah. He'll, he'll be fine. <laughs> and then my two key lieutenants on the staff team, then they went to the the elders and said, Matt's not right. You know, yeah. <laughs> we've never seen him like this. And both of them have worked uh, with me for at least eight years, and they said that he's not. You know, you you got to help him here. Yeah. Um, and in the end, the uh, sort of senior elder or church warden, he's a he's a partner in a law firm, a managing mm. partner, and said, you know, twice in my career, I've had to have three months off because I just hit the wall and burnout. That is you. Right now. And if you don't take some time off, I'm resigning because you need to take me seriously on this. And. Um, and I, he's a dear friend as well. What so a was, great friend to yeah, say yeah. that to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a dear friend. And um, so he, he tw twice he'd taken three months off. Yeah. And said, you need to do that. Yeah. 
Um, and he was right. Absolutely. I mean, they were all right. And I was right. I, I sort of knew it in my, you know, I had mm. to, I'd flagged it, but um, I was just angry. Mm -hmm. Not at anything, not with, certainly not with God, he, um, but just uh, this relentless irritability. I mean, and it's also I, when my wife said, you've got to do something about this. You mm -hmm. are a grumpy man at the moment. Um, Th they say that um, depression in men first manifests itself in anger and that anger is the, mo the cheapest and easiest emotion to access. Do you think you were depressed? Yes, yes, undoubtedly. I think, I, I think that varies. For some, it's passivity. Mm. For some, it's anxiety. For some, it comes out more in anger. Yeah, because when I, when I started, um, so in May, I stood up in front of the church family and said, guys, I can't cope. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm being told I need some time off, and that's absolutely right. I've, I'm just going to And was this on a live stream, or is this all in the room? Yeah, no, still live streaming in May. Right. Um, at that point, and for, so you, for prayer meetings, yeah. And so you, you made this announcement. Um, how did that go in, in, in the church context? Yeah. Well, I think it was actually, it was, it was wonderfully straightforward. I think over the years, we're a fairly emotionally honest sort of place. You know, we, people are, we try fairly regularly to get people up front, be interviewed and be, be real, real about life. Mm -hmm. um, and so actually it was just, it was pretty wonderful response uh, people were incredibly supportive. Only once, it's a bit easier to do it when you've been somewhere 20 years mm. than, you know, than if you've been there 20 minutes. Um, and I, th well, we'll come to this later on probably, but I think that you know, there is something, the senior pastor stands up and says, I can't cope. Mm. Um, pe people are, I think, willing to push the boundaries a little bit more of honesty themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so it did do, do that, it drove, your congregation to be more honest with each other? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think that's right. Because um, I'm imagine. I mean, I don't know that much about where you are, except you're the most expensive place on the Monopoly board. <laughs> and so I kind of imagine it's all sorts of people who put on a front that all is right with the world and I'm very wealthy. Is, 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 <laughs> is, is, is that a fair caricature of Christchurch Mayfair? Well, no, probably not. So we, 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 as I say, we were a plant 20 years ago. Mayfair is prohibitively expensive. Yeah. No one really lives in Mayfair. Right. Um, you can live 10 minutes away, but it's, it's, I mean, it's hotels, it's expensive restaurants. If you've made your money in the financial city, the square mile, you quite often set up a private practice. There's a lot of private finance. So there's a lot mm -hmm. of money in the week, midweek. Um, but our congregation is overwhelmingly young. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 to 30 is, is, is mm -hmm. I don't know, 300 of them. Uh, then families uh, and um, a slightly an older gang, mainly in the morning. Yeah. Uh, but we've always pushed pretty hard against polite Christianity. Right. Um, <laughs> not interested in, in, in pretense. Right. Uh, so I, I think that culture has always been there to a certain extent. We've just pushed it a bit further now, I, I reckon. Uh, right, yeah. So how did the, the rest of the team cope without you there? They, uh, well, I'm sure they had a good time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, the team, I mean, it's quite a big team and they're very competent. Um, and I mean, they were pleased to have me back in, in, in good heart. Right. Um, yeah, so it was COVID times were pretty hard. So I, mm. I, I didn't completely withdraw. I still went to one congregation on a Sunday and still gave some sermons. Mm -hmm. In one sense, I, you know, that's a joy to mm -hmm. me. It was people I couldn't really cope with. Right. But when I stopped, I was, the depression was fairly obvious. I just wanted to quit. I just wanted to quit. Um, you know, I had long walks with, again, these the, the senior elders, the two of them, to say, I, I, can't, I can't see... I can't envisage recovering enthusiasm. And they just said, mm, mm, come back and you know, go away. Yeah. <laughs> they were very wise and uh, didn't judge. Just said, well, let's see, let's see. Didn't panic um, and gave me the space I needed really to recover. Mm. So that was Easter a year ago. Mm, mm. And then what was the journey back? Uh, so I took two months off pretty much completely. July, um, uh, May, June. July in the UK is a s quieter month, you know, mm. our, our summer. Yeah. Um, 
and then August you, you start to slightly uh, crank the wheel to get going again. But really, September is mm. um, the beginning of the beginning the uni of the term. And, yeah, yeah. The beginning of uni, and and everyone comes back. There's this, sort of the first weekend in September. All of a sudden, everyone's there again. Mm. Uh, Again, I had wise counsel, phased return through the autumn, don't pick up everything again. So one or two things, sort of additional ministries to Christchurch, I just said, no, no, yeah. not going to do. It's all right, you know, made sure they were, um, there was manpower there. Uh, and sort of you know, slowly built back up again. Um, I changed the rhythm. I, you know, I've, I've tried to live as a, with the wisdom of an older man, not just mm -hmm. not the strength of the younger man. So I inject more rest. I take more time off um, than I used to. Uh, you know, make sure I you know, take a day and a half off rather than just Saturday. That's changed. So there's some some things there. Um, but I think also, I think part of this was accepting limitations. Again, mm -hmm. you have to relearn. Don't you? I, I was struck. Uh, reading something a couple of months or oh, six weeks ago or something, Joni Erickson Tarder, you know, this mm. is, who's been a, a massive hero or heroine or in, of, of, of the suffering, faith, yeah. an inspiration to so many with her, you know, quadriplegic suffering. And uh, she's contracted breast cancer. Uh, and she said, suffering is the textbook that keeps on telling us who we are. And you think, golly, you, you're still learning. Mm. Um, but I think that's right, you know, accepting weakness, whatever you define weakness as some sort of limitation that you can't get rid of. Um, I think it just leads you to a deeper level of trust. Mm. Um, so I think emotionally, I'm just much more comfortable with not doing stuff. <laughs> mm. So theologically, mm. what has God taught you on this journey? Yes, 2 Corinthians has been a rich book. Mm. Um, I spent most time in that. Uh, I've preached through it before a few years ago, but um, I spent quite a lot of time in that. It, the um, uh, 10 years, this is a tangent, but 10 years ago, one of the most able curates we've had is just phenomenal in everything. I mean, put me to shame, mm. just terrific preacher. He did a block in two Corinthians and they were really bad sermons. Mm. I mean, he, we, he knew that too. And we, I couldn't quite work out yeah, exegesis was fine. They were just dry. They mm. were so far away from real life. I caught up with him fairly recently and was chatting somewhat about this. He just said, I, I know now why they were bad sermons. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to be true. I didn't want 2 Corinthians to be true. I didn't want to have to go through suffering to be a competent minister. I mm. didn't want weakness in my ministry. I wanted you know, to move from one degree mm. of glory to the next in, in terms of competence. Um, uh, I've re you know, he also has gone through the mill. I realize it's not like that. Uh, so it was, it's not new, is it? I mean, I'm just glancing down here. Ch chapter 12, of course, is a very rich text. There's some obvious things that you just have to relearn. I, I, if you forgive me briefly, mm -hmm. chapter 12, verse seven, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Oh, okay. These moments of weakness of, of suffering it's a gift mm. you know, you've got to hold together that tension it's a messenger of satan and a gift from the lord you've got to hold mm. on to both otherwise you go very wrong theologically okay god has god has given this to me i think the thing that struck me most re submerging myself in this again you know but paul says three times i pleaded with the lord to take the thorn away from me but he said my grace is sufficient for you my power is made perfect in weakness so that is something that Okay, relief comes not always from the thorn being withdrawn, but from more grace. Ah, oh, that, okay. Sometimes it's not, this has got to end, this has got to end, but God will give me what I need hmm. in, for, for this scenario. Um, that's, but so, you know, mm. that, that, relearning that. Now, there are physical things to burn out and, you know, there's your stupidity about that, you know, my own stupidity in as well. But some of the events that led up to it, rather than sort of, oh, this has got to end, this has got to end, rather, no, the Lord can give me the grace I need. And that's how relief comes. That's how sustaining power comes, not necessarily the thorn being um, completely withdrawn. And for Paul to say, 
for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. Do we, you know, or do, I'm Do content. I delight that I can't do it? I mean, that's the bit yeah. that your assistant, your curate, yeah. doesn't want to be true. Yeah. That's the bit I don't want to be true. Yeah, do, I mean, none of us do, we really. I mean, it's quite something I do, or I'm content, you know, you docao. Um, am I? Mm. Do, I really, do I really believe that weakness is, is good? Um, it's good. Being limited is good. Not being able to do everything I want is good. Seeing it fall apart. Yeah, yeah. It's got to be good. It's a gift, says Paul. This weakness, this thorn, it's a gift. Um, it's good. I can delight in it. And I think, you know, it's something you relearn and relearn, as Joni Erickson Tarder can say, you relearn it, you learn it more deeply. But um, weakness is good. <laughs> and actually, as, as a Christian family, as a church family, I get relearning. If, if we only share strengths, it can lead to competition mm -hmm. and resentment. Mm. If we share weaknesses, it really builds the community, mm. uh, actually draws people together. Um, so even as, even as ministers, you know, I, I could come over to Sydney and, oh, look, you know. Look at me, look, look at us. Look, yeah, look at, yeah. I can tell look you, I can, let me tell you about everything that's going well in Mayfair. I tell you, there's so much going well in Mayfair. And, you know, the natural response of me, oh, well, you know, that's good for you. But if mm. I come and say, brother, let me tell you, I'm struggling with this and this and this. God is good. He's sustaining me. You think, oh, yeah, well, I can tell you I'm struggling with this and this and this. Mm. And he's sustaining me. And actually, it's much more encouraging mm. um, because life is hard and Christians sometimes don't tell the truth about it. And that's hopeless. It's mm. hopeless. So sharing weaknesses, I think, is encouraging for Christians to do. And um, helping our churches do that in an appropriate way. You can't stand up and cry every week in the pulpit. Mm. Um, but helping, helping, helping home groups, how do you encourage that? You know, push the envelope on really um, being vulnerable. Well, that's must have been what happened. When, when people have heard that their senior minister's not coping, the conversations in the home group are going to be much, much more vulnerable, aren't they? Yeah, I think there's been part of that. I, th I think we had, a, we had a church get away, the whole church, mid-Feb. And I asked a good friend to, to come and speak. Can you give us a whole weekend on 2 mm. Corinthians 12? Which I know sounds very intense. No, but it, that it, sounds it, great. Um, but he, he did that with a, a bits from Joe. But it was very helpful. Lots of interviews at the front um, of people. And the thing that really struck me, it, I mean, this is true in church ministry all the time, is it? But it was acute in, um, in COVID. There was a, certainly a long period in the UK where you couldn't meet, couldn't meet as church. You could meet outside mm. in groups of up to six. Um, and so at that point I got on my bike and just was cycling around the people in the congregation, meeting them in their gardens, mm. um, partly just not to get fat in lockdown, but um, partly mm -hmm. to do ministry. Uh, and I thought, golly, this is, you know, I know what's going on in your life and your life and your life. And this, you know, because we can't meet, I, I, no one else knows, mm. you know, because, okay, you can do small groups on Zoom, but yeah. you know, it's thin gruel, really. Yeah. Um, and it, but there's so, so much that, so, do you not often think in a church, you'll know stuff going on in people's lives. It's not mm. sin necessarily, or, 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 but just disappointments, hardships, mm. and you know it. And, but others in the congregation look on this family and think, oh, look at their gleaming family. Mm. You know, everything's gilded for them. And you think, no, it isn't. Mm. I mean, you don't know what's going on. Uh, but so encouraging them, people to do that and, and, and be honest. So we, you know, we've had a whole weekend and now we push much harder in church on Sunday. We make sure this one home group each week is going to, has to, you know, tell us a story about something that's going on. I mean, sometimes it's just encouragement, but sometimes it's, we're really struggling. Mm. Um, and so I, I, yeah, I, I think we've relearned that actually sharing our weaknesses is really helpful. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not complicated, it's, it's not news, but we've had to relearn that. Mm. Yeah, I'm just thinking back to, um, I, I, I went on stress leave 10 years ago and um, my memory verse for that year became 2 Corinthians 1 of uh, this has happened so that we might not trust in ourselves, but in him who raises the dead. Um, and I, I think I had slipped into trusting in my own competence 
and that the things that had gone well had gone well because I and I needed to be brought down um, and um, I mean that's what he says about why I give you the thought in the flesh uh, I mean we know it don't we but self-sufficiency is is the enemy of the gospel it's why half the people in your neighborhood say oh, well I don't need Jesus because you know I'm fine but, um, but, but even I, for Christians I think for our area of the city and I, I suspect for your area of the city, well, you've got to be fairly wealthy just to live yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, I mean, for our area of the city, um, the, the area of sin is not ra racism. Do you know, the area of the sin that the area of sin that we are tempted to is self-sufficiency. And I think that that kind of disease in the district infects our church yeah. and infects me. Yeah. yeah, I was so struck. I mean, I'm, I haven't learned this. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've learned a little bit more, but yeah. I certainly, you know, Joni Erickson Tata says I haven't learned this. You, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I haven't learned this. I, and I was brought up short at uh, Christmas uh, before we went into lockdown 29. Um, uh, we had the first carol services we do in December are our contemporary carols. Mm. So it's the only time in the year when we put on the A band. Mm -hmm. Normally they're dispersed, but you mm -hmm. know, there are a number of professional musicians. Yeah. And you get them all together. And it does sound good. Oh, seriously. And so, and it's contemporary, it's upbeat, and so it's all your classic hymns, but with the electric guitars roaring. Mm. Um, and it, you know, I think I'm an old, I'm getting, I'm too old compared to our congregation. I think it's quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my my seventeen year old had a friend, um, a mate, he uh, who's not a believer, who came along, and I'm thinking, oh, it's great. He's going to love this. I mean, mm. it's just he's going to think this is not what Christianity. I didn't expect them to, people to be this cool. Mm. And so I asked him afterwards. I said, oh, you know, um, what did you, what did you make of it all? And he said, the people who prayed. Do you always pray like that? And I thought. Oh, what? You know, so a couple prayed in the service. I said, oh, what do you mean? He said, well, he prayed for people who at Christmas time, it's really hard in their families mm. and gathering is not a happy time and actually brings up resentments and hurt. And do you, do you always pray with, with that sort of realism? Mm. Yeah, I, I, th I think so. Yeah, I want to come back. And so he couldn't care less about the music. He understood some of the talk. He'd missed the point on some of it, uh, the sermon. Uh, the real... The, the thing that connected. Yeah. yeah. No, his family is a bit messy. Mm -hmm. um, but that, oh, that honesty. So I think sometimes maybe within us, you know, we know self-sufficiency is the enemy of the gospel, but still we think, oh, in our neighbourhoods, we don't want people to stand up and say... I'm having a really hard time because we don't mm. want, we want people to think that you become a Christian and life is better. Mm. But he wants honesty. And I, you know, of course, there's a, there's a balance to be struck. You don't want, you know, puddle mm -hmm. gloom every, every week uh, up front. But the, the, the being real is, you know, that, that sort of authenticity that connects with people. Because lots of people around here, even though they are self-sufficient and probably relatively moneyed, you know, they're thinking... God, They've I, still I'm, got I'm, messy relationships. Yeah, yeah. And, and are pretending in some arenas. Oh, everybody is pretending. Yeah. Everybody is pretending. I mean, this one, this is... I, I just think as you get wealthier and more socially able, you just get better at pretending. Yeah. yeah. So in our midweek work, there are lots of... The, the main demographic would be successful men in their 50s because um, mm -hmm. you've made your money in the city, then you set up your own private practice mm. over in Mayfair. Um, and they come to a lunchtime thing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. Uh, actually, we had a number of guys and a, and a Bible study in the morning before work. Um, and most of them, I mean, Christians and not Christians, there's a mixture there. But you get them on their own and they've set up their own company and they're employing a thousand people and it's a multinational. Mm. Most of them will eventually, you know, they'll tell you, you know, I, I just got imposter syndrome. Mm. I, I know I just I, I live my life in fear that I'm going to be found out that I'm, you know, I'm bluffing in my way through this and um, it, there's actually all these insecurities beneath it. And so, again, just it's become, a, you know, the vicar who's not in their world in one sense, not, you know, he's not a business, he's not trading in their space. They can tell me, 
But then it's, oh, well, why don't you talk to him about that? Because he kind of feels the same way. Mm. And, oh, really? Others? And mm. How have you gone talking to fellow senior ministers about this? Because I'm imagining the conversations have got several levels deeper than the way they were two years ago. Yeah, with most. Some sort of go, oh, all right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really, I don't really, don't really get it. And um, but for but for most, as, as I, I'm, you know, I think I've really been struck when you when you share your strengths, when you share your successes, it can lead to competition. When you share your weaknesses, it's it's community, it's collaboration. Mm. Um, and yeah, I know. I mean, it's not it's not rocket science, is it? But it does. If, if when you vulnerable with someone, I find you know. In one sense, I guess people would look upon our church and say, oh, lots has gone well there. Mm -hmm. Matt Foley's a competent guy, probably. Um, but you see, I, do you know what? I find ministry hard. Um, and a lot, a lot has gone wrong recently. Oh, mm. oh I'm really encouraged by that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because it's real and we all know it. Um, uh, but sometimes we feel the need to, you know, put on our best, best front, don't we? Because we don't want to be embarrassed and... Yeah, we're funny mixtures. How's it changed your staff planning? Staff planning? Yeah, and when you get together and you do strategic planning or anything like that, I mean, has it changed the whole... I mean, it sounds like it's we're all... A li well, we're admitting we're not able to conquer the earth. Yes, well, there's the, I think we've, we've tweaked... I'm not sure how it is radically tweaked. We've tweaked a few things, uh, changed slightly some, the way some of the home groups operate. Um, to try and encourage, because I mean, they, they vary. I mean, some mm. have always been magnificent, um, others a little more formal. Um, and so to try to introduce a bit of this to, in, encouraging honesty, therefore tweaking the materials, uh, doing some slightly different things uh, with groups midweek. Um, I think it's honesty from the front, not just, it can't just be me. I mean, they're used to me now, mm -hmm. admitting my frailties and, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Matt's Matt's crying again. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that bad. The um, but the you know, but seeing others do that, I, I think there's a, a a growing yeah willingness to to share weaknesses. And, mm. um, the the interesting thing about you know it it's now that's slightly bewildering for some when they join us. Um, uh, it's a bit, not not unappealing, but like a, a family that joined in the autumn you know, teenage kids, and um, uh, I was talking to him the other day, and he said, it takes a while to get used to the emotional temperature here. Um, yeah, know, yeah. The senior well, pastor my, my picture talking of you about, is st stiff upper crust. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Um, so he's talk, talking about, you know, the, th the mistakes he's made and, um, and others at the front, you know. I mean, it's, it's good, but it takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> So when it, um, when it all got tough, talk to me about running towards people and running away from people. I think um, you know, when, when you're going through a hard time, uh, I, don't know if you think, I don't know if you play this game in your own head, sometimes you don't know quite what to do. You think, what would Satan not want me to do? And you, <laughs> and you have to do that. Um, when you go That's a good heart, way of putting it. I don't think I've thought of it like that, but I like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. What would he? What would he least like? Uh, and if you're going through suffering, he wants he wants to isolate you. You're the only one. They're all fine. Look, look at them. Their lives are all lovely. Mm -hmm. Your life is miserable. Mm, you should give up on the Lord, mm. or you know, you should you should you should you should go into self pity and indulge some sin, Dominic. Um, or at least stop going to community group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or just yeah, just withdraw from people. Withdraw. Mm. Um, have a pity party on your own. Um, and um, well, that's disaster, isn't it? So don't do what Satan wants you to do. And of course, that's a great thing about a culture where you're sharing your weaknesses and your struggles. You're you're going towards people. Um, and they're coming towards you. You're not getting isolated. Uh, I, dare I say for ministers, of course, isolation is a real danger. Mm. You pour your life into you know, your church family and you're so busy and ministry is often exciting, sometimes rewarding, sometimes mm -hmm. you minister because you're anxious, I know. Um, but you can pour and then you like, look up one day and go, who are my friends? Mm. Who, you know, 
Well, might the congreg... Oh, but... Mm. Um, so you can... I think it's possible to get isolated as... as I know plenty of lonely ministers. Um, but again, that to meet up with people... So you, to reach, share you reached out to peers in ministry? Yes, I, well, I did do quite a lot of that, actually. As, during my time off, um, I spent quite a lot of time... Well, I made sure at least once a week uh, I caught up with someone, partly because it was still COVID, partly in the UK, there'd been a massive Twitter kerfuffle online and about in response to some safeguarding reports, mm. this Jonathan Fletcher, and the, people got very angry online. And, and so I slightly wanted to see how people were doing. One or mm. two, brother, you've been quite demonstrative online. Put me in your shoes, tell me what, and, and just, why so me, you were just kind on. of talking to them yeah yeah, them yeah 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 i thought you know, i've hit the wall and for multiple reasons but everyone was having a hard time in covid mm. um so i thought well, one useful thing i can and do nobody was really acting at their best no 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 and certainly this twitter storm i don't think would have happened without covid i think everyone would have been in a healthier place and less likely to fire off unguarded comments i mean it's hard if you if you got if you got 45 minutes an hour for coffee and everyone thinks, oh, mm. no, no, you know, I'm busy. Mm. But rare is the time when I haven't met up with a minister for a 45 minute coffee and been, you know, and then you pray for, you know, what's going on? Tell me one thing to pray for. Oh, here's one. Mm. Rare is the time I've not been encouraged by that. Now, this change and journey that you've been through has heightened and, I mean, an emotional awareness and, an, and a dependence on God. Um, could we all grow in, I don't know, our ability to express our vulnerability, not just one-on-one, -on -one, but in the pulpit in our preaching as well? Uh, I'm sure we can all grow. We can all grow in all directions, mm -hmm. can't we? And I, I, I'm not going to sit here and try and project my personality or, or, or mm -hmm. life onto anyone else. That would be madness. Um, we can learn from other cultures, and some cultures are more expressive than us, some perhaps more restrained. Um, I really, uh, I really, uh, we've had someone over recently preaching for us um, from the Philippines, Rico Villanueva, a lovely, wonderful scholar and a pastor. He's written a terrific little book to my mind, It's Okay to Not Be Okay, mm -hmm. um, which again is, is saying, where, where is lament in our churches? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can be, um, we can celebrate too much and there's just not the space mm. for people to lament. Now, th that may, we may say, oh, no, 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 that, that's the, whatever you call them, mm. the Pentecostals, they do that. They, 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 they're sort of the, you know, they just sing, 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 and there's no room. But I wonder, sometimes, yeah, you know, that's... some more conservative evangelicals can do, can do that too, actually. We um, had a really hard time, I alluded to it a while ago, but um, uh, for a, a, a year or so, we sang one of the Sovereign Grace songs um, in the valley. Oh, and, yeah, uh, beautiful. And it, it I do, I do remember it speaking to the heart of our church quite significantly mm. in that in that moment. Yeah. Yes, it's a lovely song. Thanks for coming in. Pleasure. My guest on the Pastor's Heart, Matt Fuller from Christchurch Mayfair in London, and uh, we will be back with you next Tuesday afternoon.